What's up? And welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. Today, I want to show you a few different ways to record slash export stuff on the Novation circuit. I'm using the tracks for an example, but this will also work on the rhythm and the original. Hell, this will work on pretty much any groove box that can't directly do multi-track export, because that's the case on the circuits, which is very sad. I would love to see them implement that feature somehow. But in the meantime, we're going to have to get a little bit creative with how we record these. So I've got three different methods at three different levels of complexity and in some cases price. They'll all kind of build on each other. So method one, the absolute easiest and cheapest is to use a headphone splitter and record the headphone output directly into your computer or handy recorder. Let me show you how this works. So I've got the splitter here, this end into the headphone jack, one end into just whatever audio cable can be just totally cheap. I got this at like Target or something. And the other half of the splitter into your headphones. Now, a lot of computers will have some sort of line in slash mic in is what you're usually going to see it labeled as. Um, in this case, it's separate from the headphone jack. So just plug that in here. So essentially, this cable is running from the circuit into my computer with a split going off to go to my headphones. Because if you record your circuit just directly into your computer, like cut out the splitter entirely and just listen on your computer, you might encounter some latency, which is a delay between a thing happening and you hearing it. That is pretty trash if you're trying to do a live jam, which if you want to make a full song is what you're going to have to do. None of the circuits have a proper song mode. So to create a full arrangement, you're going to have to jam it out live by launching patterns, launching scenes, switching between projects, making stuff evolve over time on the macro knobs, all that kind of stuff. I'll show that in a bit more depth in just a second, but let me just say one more thing about the splitter method. The thing to be aware of is that there might be some extra noise introduced by this process, especially if you're using a cheap headphone splitter and cheap cables, and potentially your computer might have a cheap audio input as well. So with this method, you'll get fairly high quality stereo sound, but I would recommend trying to upgrade from it when you can. If you're maybe a bit younger or in a harder financial spot, the circuit might have already been a bit of a stretch to purchase. I'm well aware that not everyone can just spring for fancy recording setups or even fancier groove boxes. So you can absolutely make this work. Just this first method, it's pretty easy to set up. And if you want to go even more portable, you can get something like a cheap handy recorder. This is the original Zoom H1, and this has a mic input slash line input on the side. Now, I think it's mostly just a mic input, and so stuff coming into this might be fairly loud. So you'll probably want to get some sort of cheap attenuator cable, plug this into here, plug the circuit into the other end, and that will reduce the volume of the incoming signal so that you can listen to it loudly but not have it clip. But that is the first method. Let's get into the second. The second one is to also record the output of the circuit, but this time we're going to record the stereo outputs rather than the headphone output. Got a left and a right, and you're going to use an audio interface to do this. For those of you unfamiliar, an audio interface is the main device that people are going to use to get external sounds recorded into their computer. It's like an external sound card, a go between your computer audio and external audio. Like it's also got ways to connect speakers to this or a headphone jack and it's got inputs for recording stuff into it. There are a lot of companies that make budget audio interfaces out there, Presonus, Focusrite, Audient, and that's who makes this one, it's the Evo 4. It is fine. And so it's got two inputs on the back, one input on the front. I am running stereo ins, and then I've got these two just regular guitar cables. All I have to do, plug them into the output, run the other ends into my audio interface, connect that to my computer via USB, set that up in Reaper. Also, I should have mentioned you can use any DAW for this entire process. Reaper, Audacity, Logic, Pro Tools, you know, anything essentially. So I run the stereo audio from the circuit into the audio interface, plug the audio interface into my computer, and once again, just jam out a song. So now that you're actually recording the circuit, let me quickly run you through the various tools you've got to actually do some live jamming. First of all, you've got mutes and unmutes. Pretty self-explanatory to bring in elements 
right away. You've got pattern launches. And those will come in right in time with the music. You've got the macro knobs to shape a sound in real time. And if you want to launch multiple patterns at the same time, you can use scenes like I mentioned earlier. So I've got this in a state that I like. So I'm just going to go to mixer, hit shift. These will turn gold. I'll select this one to store that scene. So now this combination of patterns will live here. I can select another scene. This one's empty and I can set my patterns to be whatever I want. Go back to mixer, hit shift, make this slot populated with that. So now you get the idea. But while scenes can store the states of patterns, they can't store mutes and they can't store patch information. So if I want my patch to switch out in the middle of a song, I have to switch to a different project, which will behave exactly like a pattern. So check this out. Okay, stop that. Kind of a weird patch to use for this, but hopefully you can see how powerful that will become. And if you change the tempo in the middle of a song, the next project that you switch to will temporarily take on that new tempo, like this. But if I leave it without saving, it will return to its original tempo. So that's a great tool for doing some proper DJing just on this thing. Same deal with the original circuit and with the circuit rhythm, although the original circuit didn't have scenes and it gave you the ability to chain patterns properly out of order, which you cannot do on the tracks or the rhythm. The closest thing the circuit tracks does have to a song mode is the ability to chain scenes together. So I've got three scenes set up here. Just select this one. Bop. Now it'll just run through these in order. So if I'm somewhat strategic in how I set up my scenes, I can even do stuff like duplicate an entire scene, as you saw here. I could build up kind of a song mode arrangement just running through these, and that'll remove a lot of the risk associated with doing something completely live. But I hear you saying, what if you want to stem out your tracks so that you can mix them and arrange them in post? There is no direct way to do that, so we're going to have to do it the long way. And to be honest, it's not the worst process in the world. You can do it fairly quickly if you're strategic about it. So let me show you how I would go about recording the individual tracks on a circuit. So I'm going to mute everything. Let's start with the kick. That's usually where I like to start because then I can go into the audio file that I've recorded once I'm done with this process, find the very first hit of the very first kick, snap to it, and then snap that to somewhere on my DAW. Some people will like to actually sync their circuit to their DAW and have them be perfectly synced up. That seems like too much effort to set up to me, and I like low friction setups. So I'd rather just start with this. Let that run a bit. It's still going continuously, remember? I'll let that run. I don't remember where I'm at, so I'm just going to start the kick again. Two, three, four, one, two, three. And so this, I could probably just do it by itself. Sounds a little less good without the side chain. A little trick for actually translating the side chain while this is soloed. Unmute the kick. And then turn it all the way down. Now it's preserved that side chain. So we'll get this as well. And that's it. That's all of my tracks. You know, if I had synths running into here, I would do the same deal for MIDI one and two, just treat them like any other internal track on the circuit. And then I can just grab those different bits, snap my cursor 
to the start of the audio, drag them onto separate tracks, and I'm golden. If I also want to get some more variation, I could do some live tweaking. I could do something like this. And then just stop that. Use that as well as a little piece of my arrangement. It takes a little bit of thinking ahead, but you could do this process fairly quickly. And that is how you're going to get individual tracks. One little bonus method for getting separate tracks out of the circuit is to actually disregard the internal sounds entirely and record the MIDI instead, because circuits can export multi-track MIDI. To see what MIDI channels this stuff is living on, hit shift, go to setup, and you can select each track and see which MIDI channel that's living on. In this case, all the drums are on one MIDI channel and you cannot change that. They'll just all get sent to the same thing, so be aware of that. All this stuff can be recorded into individual tracks in your DAW via MIDI, so then you can use your own virtual instruments and whatnot to recreate the sounds on this or make them a little bit higher quality and go from there. So then a circuit becomes a little more of a portable sketch pad than a portable synth, if that makes sense. I did a dedicated video on that, so if you'd like to see that, you can click or tap up over here. And if you'd like to see an even deeper look into developing a full song on the circuit tracks with two external synths in the setup as well, you can click or tap up over here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit.